Look, you believe in the global flood. So <clears throat> I have a couple questions for you. Okay. Uh, so I guess the whole, like the oceans rose, the whole world would have been covered in salt water. So my question is, how many gallons of fresh water do you think the freshwater aquarium was on the ark to hold two of every species of freshwater animals? Uh, I'm not sure. One, because it's raining, uh, they can get fresh water from the, the sky. So that, that that's not Who a, a big problem. Who can get fresh water from the sky? And, well, we get rainwater as fresh water. No, but w the fresh water animals would have had to be on the ark, right? Because they can't be in the ocean. Right. right. So right. just like how you know, well, on how land, big you don't you think have the container to... was that held two of every species of freshwater animals. Well, I don't know. I'm sorry, I don't have that detail. Because I don't even think like the biggest aquarium in the world today is big enough. To hold two of every species. Of but don't they give the don't they give the dimensions of the ark? Oh in yeah, the, you have yeah. the cubic. The They've Bible? actually built a replica of the ark. I'd like to see him trying to get a, a freshwater aquarium on there. It would be bigger than the fucking ark is. <laughs> a freshwater aquarium to hold two of every species of freshwater animal. Well, it's it's believed that the earth at that time it wasn't like it was filled with mostly uh, rivers and just some you know lakes every. You know, everywhere else, it wasn't. There was no sea back then before the flood, uh, yeah. so most of the earth was covered by fresh water, or at least fresh water was you know passing everywhere. Yeah, but how is that helping you? Well, it's helping me because, like at the time, um, the, the the at least the waters, uh, excuse me, at least the 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 fish uh, that required fresh water. They were surrounded by fresh water in the beginning, especially with rain. Most of the water that came was fresh water that was flooding the earth. It wasn't coming from like uh, the sea that we see or existing right now. Was... Oh, you're I'm saying sorry? that you're saying that they didn't need to have all the fresh water. The, the whole the, the whole world was fresh water at the beginning. Now, why is no, that you're not? The point. Why is that not an ad hoc auxiliary hypothesis, <laughs> I guess? Well, Wait, so well, then they had a, a saltwater aquarium on the ark then? Because there was no saltwater on the earth during yeah, the flood? Like, where, were no, the, no. where were the saltwater species? Well, I, I believe that they eventually converted. I don't know exactly. Converted? Uh, <laughs> converted. See, this yeah. sounds, that sounds like an ad hoc auxiliary hypothesis. Well, no, it's just like a, evolution is is ad hoc because you're looking into how they could adapt to a new environment. That's what I'm saying. Blue whales, they blue whales, blue whales used to live in lakes. Blue whales used to live in lakes, but they converted to fruit. When you say evolution is ad hoc, what do you mean? Well, you 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 need to look at the explanations, or at least how they could have like changed, looking at how things are now. So if you see um, if you see, for example, uh, like an animal that requires fresh water, but then also could actually do go change into like uh, you know salt water, you use an explanation that's not available um, from the evidence itself. You just say, okay, well, they eventually adapted to go to both you know salt and you know fresh water. I'm just trying. To, I'm trying to understand what you what you're understanding ad hoc to mean. Well, All right. Mix shit up. Yeah, so that's what it is. So you, it's, it's just your best educated guess, with not a, not a good good enough evidence from, you know, what's that's available. That's what you think ad hoc means. Well, yeah. I mean, is that what you're saying that I'm doing? That I'm just making what stuff I'm up? Say, what I'm saying is, yeah. What I'm saying is, you're, you've encountered an anomalous datum, with respect to your hypothesis, right? And you, rather than take that as disconfirmation of your hypothesis, you've modified that hypothesis in such a way that the datum is no longer anomalous with it, but you've done so in such a way that there's no independent justification for that ad hoc, for, sorry, for that auxiliary hypothesis. Right? Well, okay, one of my justifications is I started off with the Bible, said that in the beginning, the earth was not covered with like a sea and it wasn't covered with sea, like a, you know, sea salt or whatever. Um, the, the earth had lakes and rivers and the Bible talks about how, um, you know, at that time, water actually came, sprang from the ground to, you know, feed all the plant life. 
and it talked about the Euphrates River and so on. So that's where most of the water came from. It was fresh. And rainwater, if it's coming from the sky and it floods the earth, that would be mostly fresh water. So, and then also the Bible talks about uh, waters from the deep or the deep broke and, you know, the waters came. So the waters that was under the earth, that would most likely be fresh water because it's also, you know, being somehow... Um, fresh water. Yeah, well, it's somewhat... Uh, well, water that is like well water, most of the time is fresh water because it's... I, I would imagine that it's um, filtered. So that's just what happens. If that's you, just what it you, is. If you melted all the ice caps and all the groundwater and all the fresh water in rivers, it accounts for about 3% of all the water. I, I just don't get what he's saying, right? So... Presumably, how many species of saltwater and freshwater fish are there? I don't know. I, I don't have that number in front of me. Is there anybody, can somebody look that up? Because it seems to me, right, that um, it, you're saying that... That they adapted. Wait, so you believe in adaptation? Well, yes. We, like, we all believe in adaptation or evolution, just that we don't believe in like macro. 1, 000, I'm sorry, 15,149 freshwater and 14,736 saltwater. Okay, so you, you're saying that you think that not all those species existed at that time? No, I'm saying that all those species, well, probably many, most species or many species evolved from a, you know, common evolved ancestor. Evolved into new species? Well, somewhat into a, they turn into different kinds um, Wait, but they, what's a kind? They, Let me just understand what a kind is. Well, like kinds of dogs, you know? So I'm trying to understand what, what, what's the criterion for something being a kind. Well, it's more of a subspecies, I would say. So just like, for example, no, but, you got but, no, 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 no. You, 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 you're saying it's a biological concept, right? A kind? Well, yes, just like I mentioned dog. There's different breeds of dog. Yeah. So, so dogs is a species, but then we also have, like, we have different yeah, kinds so of dogs. Why, why are you bringing up kinds? Do you think that new species can evolve? Which, do you, okay, yes. There's, that's why I mentioned macroevolution. And, that, like, there's different kinds of evolution. And we don't believe in the kind that turns into different species. Like yeah, a dog so then, then it's not relevant. It's like you're not even tracking what I'm saying. So obviously Wait, all 14,000 species, right, or whatever the number is that, that Delano gave, those, at least that many, and in fact more, right, given fossil evidence for um, extinct species, right, would have had to have existed at the time of the flood, right, if no new species emerged since then, right? Wait, do you, you, are you, you tracking what I'm saying? It doesn't matter. Wait, it you doesn't understand? matter what I'm saying. How are you responding to me? <laughs> just, just listen to what I'm saying, right? You're I know saying, what you believe. You're, you're not saying, saying. You're saying no new species can emerge, right? I didn't say that, and I'm saying the opposite oh, oh. of what you just said. Oh, so you do think that new species can emerge? I'm saying there's different kinds of among each species. Forget about kinds. I'm not so that's what I'm talking I'm about. I'm only yeah. interested in species. I'm only interested in species. So you're saying you're committed to saying all those species existed at the time of the flood, right? That's no. So, uh, so right now the issue is the, t the way you're using species, I don't fully understand what you mean by species. You like, don't know is, what is I mean lion? by species? Yeah. So would you say a lion is the same species as a cat? I, I don't know if they form no, they're not. fertile offspring they're kind of if they no. may. Okay. Yeah, so presumably well, not. not. So therefore, we're not no, talking. You, you forgot what he's talking. He's just gonna say that like a, a lion is a is a cat isn't a cat and a the tiger kind is a, of a cat. cat, and then exactly. he's gonna try to say like, oh, so you yeah, don't yeah, think that a lot of how do we get kind. ligers, right? Like, like yeah, it's so obvious what he's talking, doing. Guys. Come yeah, on. Yeah, but we're not talking about kinds. We're talking. But about that's species. what I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah, but I'm not interested in that. I'm asking you a question about species. I can't answer your question if I don't agree with your premise. What premise? Your premise is that species is different from, like, a, say, a lion is different from a, a, a cat. I don't believe that. They are the same species as far as, wait, like, feline. Wait, but not in the sense of species that I mean. 
Exactly. So we're talking past each other. So you can't just no, say it doesn't matter. No, we're not talking past each other because we're using my definition. So you just have so, to okay. use my definition. So help me. Okay, define define what you mean by species. It's just going to be creatures that, if they breed, will produce fertile offspring. Something roughly like that. Okay. So, yeah, I I disagree that you know all those species existed back then that we see today. All the species that we see today existed back then. They all were. They all had a common ancestry, and they all would were eventually rounded up among their, you know, Are fathers. Are you saying that lions and cats were not both on the ark, but they like their common ancestor was, and that in only six thousand years we now get cats and cheetahs and and fucking house cats and lions from exactly, one yeah. common ancestor only six thousand years ago, sir, sir. That's some rapid evolution. Is that well, what you're just, saying? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Because if you look at how how many dogs, how many dog species we got just in the last hundred years, dogs are one real, species, sir. Well, yeah, but the point is, how many came from just a few dogs or a few wolves? What are you talking dogs about? Cat cannot fucking produce viable offspring with a lion, sir. I'm Dustin, sorry? Dustin, Dustin, I want to make one thing clear. What? Let's say you are only seeing the cat. And you list the cat and the lions, but you are not seeing other animals which died in the phase of evolution. <laughs> oh my god, not being able to. I like that kind of audience. Yeah. Yeah. Like so thank he you, thinks god. there was only thank one you. type of feline on the ark, and that in only 6,000 years we end up with cats and lynxes and tigers and fucking lions and shit. Yes, that's what you're telling me, sir. That's what I'm telling you. Why do you Gee, think that? Damn, that's really fucking rapid. Isn't that like crazy rapid evolution? Yes, it's very rapid. Yes. This is what this is what Jack <laughs> was saying about ad, ad hoc reasoning. I mean, like it it you and you're you do you have a formation of a hypothesis that you can't be wrong about. And anytime any information is presented which counters or refutes that hypothesis, you warp your um perspective or high or your view yeah, you just construct you just construct you just you just construct an auxiliary hypothesis to accommodate the data yeah right so as to immunize the the, the theory from falsification or strong disconfirmation right and see the problem with that type of reasoning is that it basically well it makes your your theory immune to disconfirmation. Well, I just gave you guys yeah, examples, but... uh, an example of like, for example, a breed or a species that has um, so many kinds of dogs, for example, um, for the last hundred years, like a lot of the dogs that we see today never existed a hundred years ago. Now, well, if you imagine wait, just- why are you, Wait, years, sir, why are you calling do breeds. different breeds of dog kinds? Because when you say kind, you need something even broader than species, but a breed of dog is, is more narrow than a species. So you're using kind to mean totally different things. Well, th these words are kind of interchangeably. We just use them differently when we're talking about um, certain animals. So when we say, you know, there's several breeds of dogs, we know a lot of these dogs, it's hard for them to mate with each other because of their size. And it also, you know, maybe it's just harder for them to, you know, uh, have intercourse. So, but you can, uh, no, they you can, can that's not the only way to like breed them. You know that, right? Like you can actually make test tube babies out of some of those species and they'll breed perfectly fine. You can make test tubes. So of course it's not, it's not natural. That's what you're saying. I'm right? not saying that at all. I'm just saying that this, this notion that because you know, there's like a size discrepancy. Yeah. It's hard. It's hard to get them to have sex with each other. But that doesn't mean that you Look, can't you, get their sperm If you inserted a, a, a fucking chihuahua sperm into a Great Dane's Maybe. uterus, you'd get, a, you'd get a dog. That's the definition right. of a species, as in, as in one of the qualifications is interbreeding. Sure, sure. But my point is, they get they they can get they become so different over time. Seeing how different they are already, imagine how just 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 uh just uh times that times a thousand like thousands of years already just two thousand years how many species of dogs or different breeds of dog would come out it would be mm -hmm. so different that they can't breed with each other do you believe all no, of but that dogs but then you think macroevolution evolution is impossible and that's the part i don't get like you think that um, that kind of hyper accelerated yeah, evolution and you know what I mean, like we macro. know that thousands of years ago in uh civilizations had pictures of tigers and cats 
So you, they would have yeah. had to exist yeah. already thousands of years ago. Yeah. Right. So, so, yeah. And the main thing is that that's about, when, when, when Justin, Justin said, when Justin, Justin said, oh, wait, wait a second. I just want to make sure I just, because we can go down to the weeds on this, but like what Jack was talking about, Justin, can you be wrong about a uh, hypothesis that you're, this, that you're proposing? Is it possible that you are yeah, wrong? Yeah, so I can be wrong. I just have to be convinced of it. Okay. And how would you know? How? Yeah, what would it take to convince you that you would be wrong? Uh, I, I'm not sure yet. Would I'll you say... You. Okay, Jesus Christ. We okay. would have to be specific on... <laughs> we have to be specific see, on... See, that, that's topic. really the problem, right? Because, see, for there to be evidence for your hypothesis, it... That means you have to know what would count yep. as evidence against it. Yeah. When, when, when Dustin said uh, the, the massive um, uh, evolution in the last 100 years. Oh my god. Is there in like a ESL room or something like that? So what's going on? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean, like, Justin, I'm sure you would agree that, like, the position that you're taking is, and again, I'm not trying to make an appeal to an authority, but that that literally, I mean, I, I mean, 99.9% .9 of scientists, like, who, who have thousands and thousands of papers in all the areas that we're talking about, refute what you're saying. So in order to support what you're saying, you'd have to actually be able to provide some serious uh, evidence and hypotheses that you could test to confirm what you're saying. Well, I'm not the scientist to have those papers, but I'm just a person that believes in common sense. And, you know, if I if I but, myself cannot understand what they're saying, then I shouldn't believe it. Drove dinosaurs oh, and work. Well, I mean, but there's reasons why common you guys sense, believe Common just, sense brought you papers. Common sense is what brought you to sign off on Noah's Ark containing the largest of freshwater aquarium that's ever existed on this earth. That's where that's well, I never believed that it was an aquarium. And that's where boat. common sense got you. That's where common sense got you. Well, I never said it was a, an aquarium on the boat. Someone else is suggesting that. Well, do you yeah, think and then you signed off on it. Yeah, I didn't sign off on it. I said the whole earth was pretty much the entire world was covered by fresh water. No, you, you said that rain. also, but you said the thing about you signed off on the thing about the aquarium. There's nothing about. Said, I guess you yeah, said. I yeah. guess right, and then and then Godless actually well she said, well where'd they get all the fresh? Where did they get all the fresh water for the aquarium? And then you said, well from the rain. Yes, from rain. Don't act so. like you weren't. Don't act like you weren't signing off on the largest freshwater aquarium ever on the on Noah's Ark, dude. Come on, don't try to no. rewrite history when you got a room full of people that were here for it. Okay. No, you, you understand that the whole time I was trying to explain where the fresh water would come from and that the whole world at that time did not have sea sea water or pretty much sea salt at that time. The whole world wasn't covered by sea well, salt. Then why would you say the rain? They're literally like floating. The entire world is covered with fresh water. Why would you say <laughs> that? Where did they get the fresh water? Oh, they got it from the rain. Well, because you, I think you guys were under the impression that the whole world was covered by salt water when actually it's most of the rain most, all rain is fresh water so there's no mystery to that if they even need it to make a fish tank and then two um they like all the sea life was they didn't have to have it in a tank they just had leave it in the ocean god never commanded them to bring any fish on the boat so i don't see why i would have to go are by fish their... not kinds or two are fish not kinds so it says of the land so that's there's no fish that walks on land at least that needs to walk on land well, constantly <laughs> unless you're talking about sea uh, seals or whatever seals aren't fish okay but they don't need to walk on the land yeah well, neither do they I. are sea creatures <clears throat> let's get for so, jack do you take a common sense position on like everything like uh, when you go to the doctor or uh, other technological aspects that you may not fully understand do you accept the consensus of experts in a position or do you just say oh i just i don't agree with that i go with i go with my gut feeling you ask jack or me i'm asking you justin oh 
yeah, I use I use common sense for everything. And in, 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 in fact, if I wanted to believe someone, at least has to have it has to make sense to me um, first. I don't just go along with it. And if it doesn't make sense, I just say, oh, well, they know better than well, me. What about what about disease? Like, um, do you agree that like viruses uh, can be a cause of disease in the human body? Yeah, because that made sense to me. What? OK, but why does it make sense to you? I mean, you can't see a virus like uh, like uh, you're not a biologist. Uh, you don't have any knowledge in that area. Well, all I have to do is really just say, I just think backwards. I mean, if there's animals and there's things that are small, like insects, I'm sure there's things that are even smaller and it just goes down even further. So I imagine those things could actually harm me um, down to my, you know, down to the cellular level. So I, I don't see why. Yo, uh, Come on. Justin, is the, is, the, is the Dead Sea mentioned in the Bible? The Dead Sea? Uh, I believe so. If, if, if not, then... I have to look at it. And the Dead Sea is that sea which has such unusually, uh, such high um, salinity that like you can float it and stuff like that, right? Right. Yeah. Uh huh. And there was it was all fresh water back then, right? Back, are you talking about right before the flood or after the flood, like a thousand years after the flood? In the old days. In the old days. Well, the old days is like we consider a thousand years and back. You mean like time of Jesus when there was the Dead Seas? Or no, he clearly he's talking about before the flood. Well, so there was no Dead Sea before the flood. Uh, then why in Genesis 14.3 is it referred to as the Salt Sea? Genesis what? 14.3. Numbers thirty four three twelve Deuteronomy three seventeen Joshua three sixteen and twelve three. Oh, you mean You're after the flood? Wrong. Yeah, they, that's clearly after, after, the after the flood. Genesis is before no, the no, flood, that isn't part it? of Genesis is before the flood. But like, if you read Genesis fourteen, it clearly talks about Abraham, and Abraham is way after Noah. Right. So we're we're kind of conflating yeah. times here. Oh, so you're saying that just like right after it went to the saltwater ocean thing universally no i believe that you know things that the earth changed uh, drastically at least over 500 years after the flood let's say genesis 14 3 what's that well this is definitely you know during abraham's time and uh there was at least 500 years that passed after the flood, uh, yeah, after the so, flood. So something like eighty percent of the fresh water turned to seawater, and this didn't lead to any kind of mass extinction event. Like all these animals just massive, just magically got like an osmotic barrier or whatever. Well, in like five hundred years. Well, considering you don't believe in macro evolution. Well, I don't believe in micro evolution because I don't believe in deep time, but I believe in you know evolution in the sense of like. You know things adapting in in a short amount of time. Yeah, you so, don't need you don't need yeah. these time though. Like the rate of evolution that you're suggesting, right, is insane. At that rate, who needs six billion years? You could probably do everything in like six hundred million or something, right? You want you, you think you you think we went from like cats to to tigers in like six thousand years? I mean, we could probably go from like protists to humans in I don't know a hundred million at that rate. Yes. So if, I mean, I believe that in the beginning. Um, just being consistent with my belief that that God created us with like extreme genetic, um, you know, variety with our within our gene pool, um, and you know because of that we were able to actually adapt to our environment very easily in the beginning. Now, after a thousand years of just um, you know uh, I guess ancestral relationships and all that stuff, the the genetic variety within us started to dwindle, so we couldn't just you know practice incest. And, um, you know, our genet our genetics just couldn't change as much um, now that we're like so far from how we were before. Do you know what the difference between a mutation rate and a fixation rate is? No, I don't. Okay, so, I mean, what you may be talking about is a mutation rate. Like, you, like let's say that there's more genetic variety in a population. That may lead to higher mutation rates. But a fixation rate is the rate at which, like, 
uh, like a change in genes, right, actually fixes in the population, right? Because genes are changing all the time. People are getting mutations all the time. Only the useful ones reach fixation, and that's a much slower rate, and is determined by a, a host of other factors than just the rate at which mutations are happening. So you actually have to like posit some some mechanism by which fixation rates were faster in the past than they were right now. Well, I'm not sure about, about the term genetic mutation. I'm sorry, I interrupted someone. Well, okay, uh, I'm not sure about the term mutation. I assume mutation is when something is wrong, and it's not necessarily adapting. No, 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 um, no that's not what mutation means. Mutation just means a change. I just want to add. I just add. Uh, Justin, this is going to sound insulting, but you saying that mutation means that it, like there's something wrong. Don't you think that this like, well, we're going to Deepak will explain to you what mutation is, obviously, in detail. But do you think you just don't understand? Like, have you actually looked into evolution at all, and like looked at the mechanisms? Look, what have you ever looked up a definition of mutation in evolutionary theory? Well, I'm right now I'm using right now I'm looking it up uh, because often the yeah, right now. The, but, yeah, because so, how we use it, and it just... just you were just like, play. evolution, bad, so, not looking right, so, at this. No, like, I, I'm just going to I'm gonna stop talking in two seconds. It's just like, it's just so, like, man, just look into these things before you say they're wrong. Like, just well, stop taking everything off your Bible and just say, throwing away all valuable science just because you don't understand it. But go ahead, Deepak, I'm sorry. Wait, can I, I ask a, wrong, an unrelated though. question? It's just a quick question, and you guys can get back to the conversation. So it's like really hard to breathe at the, the top of the tallest mountains. There's like barely any oxygen out there. And the Bible says that the water rose so high that it was 20 feet above the highest mountain. So what the fuck did God? So let me see what is, is this your uh, theory, Jason? God created special oxygen for them to breathe while they were up there. Well, back then, um, you know, the air was a lot more uh, dense or thick uh it, as it is today so i can't really tell you the exact environment back then but um you know it's it's believed that the earth was actually covered by a canopy of water which um compressed the air and made things more um oxygenated okay so, sir okay you guys came back to the conversation sorry for interrupting yeah i hope i answered uh, you that that canopy most, of that, water? That was the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard in my life. A canopy of water canopy that compressed of the air. <laughs> like, got, seriously, what the fuck was that? Well, the Bible like, talks heard, about... I've, I've heard some ridiculous things about No, but about in life, the Bible, they, the one. Bible talks about how <laughs> the firmament um, is a glass dome holding back the celestial waters. Right. But I guess he thinks that used to be a case and is no longer the case or something like that. Yes, that's that's what I believe, that the Earth was covered by a dome of water that covered the entire Earth. And that was what actually made up the, the flood water. Is he trolling? No, he's not trolling. He's not trolling. Oh, my God. But, he's got to be trolling. No, he's not. He's not trolling. But I guess what I don't understand is when did that change? That's the flood. That That is what caused the flood. Um, there was water that mm -hmm. came from below the surface of the earth. And then also the, the water that was the canopy or the, the ceiling, in a sense, that came down. That was part of the rain. That what what happened to well, the glass? Right oh, go ahead. They... Well, that was the glass. The, the, the glass was the water. So the glass was the water? Yeah, it was a sheet of water. Or you can. Um, we, I can tell yeah, you're trying I not to laugh uh, when you're seeing this, sir. I can't quite be right still because here? later characters Is... after the flood still mention the firmament, like in uh, Dan... what's his name, Job, the guy, the guy's family whack. Uh, like his buddies mentioned the firmament, for example. The firmament ain't something that like disappeared, bro. It's... Right. So the term firmament in the Bible means expanse. Um, he, because in Genesis, he says that, you know, he would, he would put water above the firmament and the firmament, he will call it heaven or skies. So yes, there's firmament in the sense of there's skies even today. Um, but there was water above the firmament that the Bible mentions in Genesis chapter one. Is Daniel, Is Daniel still, here? still here? Are you still here, Daniel? Still here Daniel? He's down there. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. What, what do you what, think what about you think all about this? All this would intrigue me about Jason's position because I'm, I'm also I'm not official in SDA. I don't go to SDA church, but like 
I've been following him for a good seven, eight years, and I, I, you, I just really you believe all this. You accept everything he's saying. Uh, like, the I, I can't refute it. I mean, I, I'm open to to hearing otherwise. Okay, all right. I just wanted to check. You with can't you. refute it. <laughs> it's 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 irref- It's not possible, really, to refute a hypothesis that um, is immune to falsification, right? I mean, the point is, he'll just he'll just adopt some ad hoc auxiliary hypothesis with respect to every anomalous datum that he encounters, right? So I think it's really the reasoning that has to be, it's really that type of reasoning that has to be criticized. I, I, right? I think that because you guys are not familiar to these explanations that you think it's ad hoc or I'm just making it up on the fly. No, no, that's not what, that's not what we think. Because the point is, if you think there's evidence for your theory, that means that you understand, right, what would count as evidence against it. But when you were asked, Right, what would count as evidence against it? You said I have no idea. Right? That you didn't know. Well that's a broad question, that's why. So if you ask me what's evidence of, against God or something, well you we would have I'm not to, talking like, about God. Well I know, but right? it's just an example. It's an example of something being broad and then like I would have to think about all the millions of things that you could be talking about. So when it comes to young earth's creationism, we have to be like very selective of Look, what exactly. Do you believe? Is. Do you believe that the evidence favors your hypothesis? Yes. Now we have okay, to. Okay. So about then you then parts. then you then you would understand what would count a strong disconfirmation of it. Right? Well, that's just a logical entailment. Yes. S- same thing for both of so, us. So, but you didn't give an answer to that question when you were asked, right? Well, As to what would disprove it's too broad. it. Why is it too broad? Well, because I can, like, there's alter, there's alternative explanations in my head for a lot of these things. Just like for you, if I, if if I was to ask you what would actually cause you to not believe in evolution, it would be hard for you to just give one answer. Because that wouldn't be hard. Okay, so what would cause you to not believe? Wait, no, in no, evolution? that's not the question. That wait, no, that's not the question. The question is. What would be evidence against the evolutionary hypothesis? Look, okay. what, single, what would be a single yeah. authentic finding of a fossil out of place on the geographical layers with the Waltz by evolution? Oh, we have that already. I mean, there's well, I don't think no, 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 no. You wouldn't say a single. I don't know why. Yeah, I don't. I don't, I don't, don't think it would falsify it. It would be inconsistent with the hypothesis, perhaps. Right. So you yeah, the point is that you can. Wait, Justin, no, listen. Just listen, wait, 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 wait. The point is, is whether or not you can have something that lessens the probability of the hypothesis being true, right? Now, if you say that ev- um, our evolutionary theory predicts that these type of transitionary fossils are going to be on layers in between the fossils that it's transitioning between, and we find that these transitionary fossils, in air quotes, are above the so-called transitionary species, we would... Find that as evidence against our evolutionary hypothesis. There you go. There's one. Right. Okay, so then if I was now to we're asking. You... Wait, wait, no. We just gave you evidence against ours. Now you give us something that would be evidence against yours. You said that was extremely difficult to do. We just did it easily. Did you really? Yes. Yes, she clearly did. Okay, so in other words, if you find something that's out of place, that would that that would cause you to not believe yes, in evolution. If we find, oh, if slightly. we have an expectation that's not met, we would take that as evidence against the hypothesis. Yes. So, yeah, there's a term called out of place. You know, artifacts. There's, it's called a. Uh, that's o- irrelevant. O- o- what, what what's the point of that? Yeah, and that's very relevant because there's no, they, they already have that already. And you still believe in evolution. So what? I said that's what do you not understand? The point is I'm giving you reasons. I'm giving you stuff that could count as evidence against it. That doesn't mean that there's not evidence in the other way, right? You can have evidence against your theory and say that this, yes, this is actual evidence against my theory. However, I have a mountain of other evidence for my theory that makes me believe it, right? There's nothing inconsistent with that. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I would have to so I would have to look at it from let's say, for example, ge- geology. Um, you know, if, if, 
in some way we can actually measure, um, I guess, the life of human beings throughout a thousand years, a hundred thousand years, even a million years, then, okay. And I, I would just actually no, just give me an observation. See. Give me an observation you could make that would be evidence against your theory of, of young earth, of the firmament, whatever, whatever. Just give me some kind of observation that would be evidence against it, like I did for you. Um, hmm. I, I, I'm not quite sure. I have to think about it a little bit. The reason more. why it's you just... won't be able to do it is because your theory is built to be in defense or well, to be defensible against anything, right? If you say, well, uh, let's say uh, the fact that there's like dirt on top of water or something is going to be evidence against your theory, you just be like, well, no, because God could have done this in this way that would have made it so dirt was on top of water. The point is, is that because your theory is just made to explain these events, you're not going to be able to argue against it because you'll just create new individual scenarios for any individual thing we bring up as a problem. Yeah, and, and that's that's just the way a system of belief no, works. No, you no, have the, no, no. Well, yeah, well, because, hold on, hold on. no, 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 because Let what... Let me just first what's finish, a, though, because oh I, I, was just brought up, I just brought up the term out-of-place artifacts, and that didn't just shut down your beliefs. You guys had alternative explanations for that. Yeah, but you're not so, understanding, thing, you're not right? understanding what the problem is. The problem is, is that all you do is construct ad hoc auxiliary hypotheses, right? That's not and all I do. It's just that you guys Well, if it's don't... not all that you do, if it's not all that you do, right, then you should be able to tell us what um, novel predictions your hypothesis generates, right? Okay. Well, I mean, I can't think of it right now. Yeah, so that's why I stand by my claim. Problem. That's why I stand by my claim that all you do is construct ad hoc auxiliary hypotheses. And what I'm saying is, is that what might be called a progressive research program, right, is one which actually generates novel predictions. It 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 generates, um, it generates, uh, it, it there. In other words, it's a theory which is informative, right. It produces new knowledge, not merely accommodates what's already known. It's new beliefs, actually. Sorry? It's new beliefs. I mean, you don't know for sure if you can't, like, prove it 100%. What does that have to do with anything? Well, you just, you just calling it knowledge doesn't make it truth or facts. Look, I, I, don't, I don't understand. What are you, you're, you're trying to raise some kind of epistemic skepticism. I'm saying there's a difference between an informative theory and an uninformative one, right? Yeah, I believe I'm informing you. No, no, no. You're not understanding what I'm taking to be the criterion of informativeness. The criterion inf of informativeness is that it generates new knowledge, not merely accommodates what's already known. Do you understand that distinction? No, I'm not fully following. Okay. Can you give an so example? Like, yeah, I'll give you an example. So take, for instance, um, take relativity theory right relativity theory was developed by einstein to accommodate um, an observation or set of observations that were inconsistent with the well, unexpected shall we say on the prevailing paradigm which was that there was an ether which was the medium through which light propagated right that was the standard view of the of of light in the 19th century, that there was um, a luminif luminiferous ether through which light propagated. And it generated certain predictive expectations that were tested by Mickelson and Morley, I think around like 1870 or something, right? And unfortunately, what was observed was inconsistent with the ether hypothesis. And cast the because because light was expected to um, travel at different speeds um, under certain conditions under the ether hypothesis, and what was observed was that the speed of light was uniform under all conditions that were tested. So that cast doubt on the ether hypothesis, and it put uh, 19th century physics into a kind of crisis because no one knew how to explain this observation. Now Einstein constructed 
a. Well, you don't have to give the whole story, but just give the point that I, he, no, he was able. Let him let him tell it. That's a good point. Let Jack. I signed. I'm very lost in it though. I signed constructed an alternative theory, right, which could accommodate those anomalous those observations, which which were anomalous with respect to the prevailing paradigm, right. But the problem is all that that would do was show that there was a way you could um, uh, you could build a theory that would fit what was already known, right? So what was wanted was something more than that, which was an independent justification for the theory, because otherwise the theory might appear to be purely ad hoc, right? Well, one thing, one, one example of how that was found was that the theory actually generated a novel prediction. There was a novel prediction derivable from the theory, which was that light should bend around massive objects, right? A phenomenon called gravitational lensing. Now that was not something that was known, right? Or even theorized prior to Einstein, that light should bend around massive objects, right? But it was a testable hypothesis. And in 1919, they went out to test the hypothesis uh, during a lunar eclipse, I think. And well, story goes that it was confirmed, but I think there's some doubt as to whether the data wasn't cooked there. So there had to be subsequent repeated observations, right? Since then, I assume it's been yeah. uh, confirmed probably, you know, many, many thousands of times, right? Yeah, the um, 1919 so, uh, measurements were like, had too much errors to be really draw the conclusions yeah. that they ended up yeah. drawing. The path. Yeah. But, yeah. But the point is, subsequently, there were many, many other observations that overwhelmingly confirmed the hypothesis of gravitational lensing, right? Now, I my understanding is that the hypothesis of, say, universal common ancestry and certain other things, right, does actually generate novel predictions, right? But see, I'm just not aware of um, young Earth creationism, let's say, doing anything like that, right? Which is why I'm saying all you do is um, engage in this kind of ad hoc, um, ad hoc construction of a hypothesis to immunize it from any countervailing data. Well, okay, so maybe I'm not uh, best suited to explain all the predictions or the novel predictions that uh, young Earth creationists have, have uh, you know, done. Um, but I mean, as far as I've gathered, there's one. Um, well, there's one when it comes to like explaining the Grand Canyon and also showing how it was formed. Um, and it's basically uh, with the hydroplate theory, explaining how uh, with the flood happening and all the, the assortment of how each of those layers, the sediment layers would create different um, pretty much strata um you would have what we have what we see today but then this idea that a river carved out the grand canyon would be insane considering that wait, wait, just it would have sure, to go wait, uphill wait, wait. what's the novel wait what's the prediction yeah. that was made well so so the prediction is is that if there was if you were to actually um let's say uh like have a flood of of water just you know, streaming a bunch of sediments or sand or so on, it will create the same kind of layering that you would see in the Grand Canyon. And that's what not we see today. So not a prediction, right? Just an explanation of things we already know about. That's not, yeah, it's not a novel prediction. So then how what does, do okay, so then how does evolution predict, or how does the geological, re, um, geological record predict anything? What? The record, well, you guys believe it, the record right? Isn't a because it, predicts well, stuff, right? I mean, we, there are there, there are a number of novel predictions. That? There are a number of novel predictions with geology. Like, and I, I won't go into all the details, but an example is plate tectonics. The plate tectonic theory is one that was, you know, in kind of uh, the brewing about people's minds for a while, but it wasn't until like the 1930s, and but like for around 20 years, that we actually were able to confirm the 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 uh continents were actually being shifted around as opposed to the like the the 
uh, polar uh, flips of the polar axes. And so that is a novel prediction that was made based on a hypothesis that of continental C4 spreading and making estimations with regards to geomagnetic anomalies to determine the movement of the plates. So there are novel predictions that have happened geologically as well as evolutionarily. Like and we could go into, you know, Deepak probably can talk about Tiktaalik and other novel predictions that have been made from an evolutionary standpoint. Well, that doesn't require Giving evolution. This guy, like, That's exactly. observation. You're, you're all wasting your breath. He's a looney tune. Well, it's okay. I'm not trying to baptize anyone. And I don't think you guys are going to baptize me into, I guess, evolution. But uh, if I got some water, would you baptize me right now? Uh, no, I, have to, I have to have I have to see if you have a true confession and or a belief in Jesus. I just think you have a fun and like I honestly think and I don't think that we're going to get past this today is that you have a fundamental misunderstanding of all of these concepts. You don't understand what evolution is like you have some weird adaptation theory instead of actually the evolutionary theory. Uh, evolution is adaption. No, 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 it's not. Uh, uh, so how do you, how do you explain evolution without adaption? You understand that you could, there's negative processes in evolution, right? There's negative. Yeah. In other there's, words, it's not adapting. Your mutations could be bad and that could right. propagate into an entire uh, species. Which is not a good thing because they won't survive. Right. So where's the adaptation there? Right. So, I mean, the ones, it's, it's the strongest that would survive. Isn't that what you believe? That's a different thing. That's not, do you think that those individuals who got the negative things didn't evolve? Well, that's them adapting. That's them evolved. They adapted in a bad way? I don't understand. No, they, if, if they did have something that, that they adapted, if they did have some kind of bad mutation then they probably overcame it by the next generation by adapting and overcoming. Well, they just went extinct. Exactly. So what are you saying? So how I'm did saying, they adapt? What do you mean? They died. Right. So the, what we have today is all about people adapting. Everyone who didn't adapt eventually died out. So we, we can't be talking about this is the thing. If you understood the, like the individual mechanisms of evolution, you wouldn't be saying that evolution is adaptation. So then, who says the strongest will survive? Who? who... That's still, first off, the strongest will survive is, so is a dumb. very is a very it's a misnomer view of yeah. one of the mechanisms of evolution, which is natural selection. That's a mechanism of evolution. That's not evolution. Yeah, and it's oftentimes confused when they say the strong, like the strong will survive. They people refer to fitness, but fitness is about reproducibility. It's about a species being at, like being able to actually increase its its reproducibility, not how strong a specific species is. So well, strength selection. could be anything. Strength it's not be a strength strong. issue. No, it could be weak in every single way except select uh, sexual selection. It could be literally the case that this. Yeah, like those male a... birds that like they have such decorative feathers that it weighs them down and makes them yes. more vulnerable to prey. Yes, exactly. Now only, there's like extreme cases of that where like you'll have a very malnourished, like very fucking twinkish fucking uh, individual who just is extremely pretty because of the bright colors, and those bright colors make it able to reproduce but that's a negative detriment what's well, a detriment on the entire population as a whole it's clearly okay. doesn't adaptation oh okay well i guess it's not adapting then but the point is like you don't understand any of these like concepts right so i don't if i didn't understand these concepts i wouldn't be saying it's wrong I don't. I don't know if I'm whether I understand it. Is is just that it seems like each person has a slightly different standard of what evolution is. No, you'll you'll find it's pretty much uniform. No. Almost pretty, everybody yeah, in here is going to give you a would, uniform definition other than you. Okay, so all you guys would agree that evolution is not adaptation. Oh, okay. So, uh, so evolution can also be mutation, which would mean that uh, I guess that's that another, line of species could die out. One, of, one other, no, that's not me mutation. For the mutation thing. can be good or bad. Yeah, but if it does, if it's bad, then it won't survive. Therefore, it just doesn't exist anymore. So what? Why do you keep saying that? Yeah. 
because we're talking about species that this exist is all today. Compatible with evolution. Evolution can make if the it's bad for what? Bad fucking uh, mutations are not going to propagate within this fucking species. So what? But that's not. It's you not even true either. Gonna, what, do you think it's a headshot or something? I think some del deleterious mutations get uh, still survive by chance. Yeah, there, there's there's instances of deleterious mutations that just spread out through the entire population, and that's why a lot of them die off. And uh, a remember, like a, a beneficial mutation that doesn't move completely to fixation, but, uh, given like environmental pressures, could switch to a maladapt to a, a deleterious yes, exactly. mutation. If you think about the uh, the uh, white fox, there was an instance, not the white fox, but it was an instance of some white haired species that was living in a uh, snow area that was extremely well adapted to it, who then hit a uh, a wet spell or a dry spell or whatever, a heat spell or whatever, and it became like the least adapted species because of how bright it was, and it got wiped out. All because of the uh, environment change. Okay. I'm just looking up, like, even National Geographic, it kind of it says evolution, adaption, or simply adaption is the judgment of organisms to their environment in order to improve their chances of survival in that environment. And, yeah. Yeah, see, that's a very... Next question, that's a how very... is evolution? A misunderstood definition of it because that definition so, right there is what people think of when they like look at Pokemon and shit, right? They're thinking of like these uh, these like individual uh, entities that are like growing limbs and stuff to be able to help them in their environment. It's just silly. Okay. All Can right. I ask you another question about the Ark, Justin? Yeah, please do. So when the cover, the Earth was, what's your explanation for? the plant life that it was, must have all been wiped out when the earth was covered on in water right so what did god specially recreate plants and cover the earth and like plants and trees and shit because they um, would all die underwater well, they yeah that's a good question part animal species by the way I mean, that's a good question. Um, the best I can do is say that uh, most plants, if not all, had seeds. And, uh, you know, the, just the, the just them being washed around uh, would just disperse the seeds around. And also, if, I mean, this is not said in the Bible, but perhaps God, you know, could have told um, Noah to, you know, take some seeds with you. That's the best I can say. Oh, like, oh, like the, uh, the plants in Australia regrew because Noah threw some seeds around when he got off the ark on Mount, Mount Ararat. Well, not um, necessarily, but you could. I, I think if just... a seed is underwater for forty days, I think a lot of seeds would die. Yeah, but they could be like light but enough. another thing, kind of if they had to wait until and have time to grow when they got off the ark, then what the fuck were the the um, plant eaters eating? Because there would have been no fucking plants. And then another thing is when they got off the ark, the plant eaters would have nothing to do to eat. And the herbivores would have nothing to eat. They would starve to death. And on top of that, uh, every time the carnivores ate, they would have wiped out an entire species. <laughs> yeah, that's a good point. Uh, well, this is going to sound ad hoc. This is where you introduce an ad hoc hypothesis of God just like put food in their bellies, right? No. So it's going to sound ad hoc anyway to you, but well, uh, let me at least say it. This is going to be great. Go ahead. Yeah. So um, before the flood, um, the food that they ate was actually way more, um, I guess, nutrient. It, it, it had more vitality to it. And the, this is where I get this from. Um, I get it from the fact that like when God uh, gave, or at least an angel gave Elijah uh, some food, uh, it says that he went off the strength of it for 44 days. Uh, so he didn't have to eat after just eating that one um, yeah, I guess cake from heaven. So if I if I assume that are you just going to say they didn't, say they didn't eat? eat? Yeah, I'm saying that the the, the okay. food that they ate back then didn't have them hungry within a day. They could have just lived on for like a whole month without eating. Um, yeah, the, because, the problem I mean, is it see... takes uh, plants longer than a month to grow. But um, more of a curiosity, what was that curse about? You know, where the men had to work to survive? Because I mean, that doesn't sound like a whole hell of a lot of work to eat a little fucking cake and just go on for eight fucking years. Wait, I'm trying to connect what you're saying to. Well, um, it, wait, I'm okay. saying it seems pretty inconsistent to hypothesize that. Oh, the people back then just, you know, they, they needed to eat like a fucking peanut and they could be good to go for like six months 
and then say, oh, yeah, it was a curse that mankind would have to work to survive. <laughs> yeah. So back then, so the beginning, it wasn't like an immediate, like, um, I guess, degradation and, and wildlife. Uh, it took time for that to happen. So the thorns and thistles and all that stuff that God said that would happen, that took psh, thousands of years for that to eventually happen. He was only pronouncing what would eventually happen to humanity. Now, when it comes to, um, I guess, as far as like the food and the degradation in nature, you can tell that things were a lot more different because they lived 900 years. So uh, proportionally, uh, like what we do, like if we eat food now, I mean, it, we, it, we would get hungry because our body burns it faster and the food doesn't have much nutrients. Back then, they had so much nutrients that it can keep them living up to like 900 years, almost a thousand years. So, well, why uh, explain well, why the same? Years without, eating? without food? No, I'm saying they could live a thousand years, but back then, because they can live that long, they probably didn't have to eat that much, eat as much as we do today. Okay, can I ask you another question? So, how does the... I just want to say because like, you see how you're making ad hoc explanations? So, I mean. You're literally just making up anything that you can think of that would explain it. You're not, well, you're not coming up with a theory beforehand and running it through, right? Or you're not even adjusting your theory and making uh, predictions or making uh, adjustments to your theory that create these novel predictions, right? You're just adding on whatever you can that solves the problem. Well, I'm getting this from at least the Bible, so it's not like I just thought it up in thin air. And then, the two, Bible, mean I mean, this is not something... Whatever you... Yeah. Sure. Sure. It's always going to be about my interpretation. But one thing we also know about like plants and foods that um, was way more nutri uh, had way more nutritional value than we have today. Like the food that we have today, it doesn't have as much substance as back then. Um, like even just a hundred years ago, there's all kinds of fruits and vegetables that we would not recognize today because either they don't exist or we uh, manipulated it by. Um, I guess, uh, for the, for the better. yeah, for the better for, I mean, just so that it can stretch out to the most people. But, um, like back then the food actually, uh, had more nutritional value than we have today. Well, first off, when you say, why are you saying back then? Like, where are you getting this back then? It was less nutritious. Well, if you just, so if you just Google, like what a banana yeah, looks like. Yeah, that's 70, 70 years ago. It was less nutritious. It says, it says nothing about yeah. like. A thousand years ago, think the reason things are less nutritious now is because of selective processes and big business making these things way more producible than they are nutritious. I don't and understand also, how I don't understand how this has anything to do with like the environment at the time and evolutionary processes making these things less nutritious. I don't. Well, it has a lot to do with the ground. You make plants from the ground, and what you put in the ground would also, um, you know, bring the nutrition to the plants that you're growing. So if you have good fertilizer or I guess manure or whatever that has rich um, nutrition in it, then it's going to bring out good fruits. Now, because of what we're putting into the plants with the pesticides and all these different things, that would affect the food. Back then, because... The the fuck, when, you, when you say back really? then, so like the Romans weren't eating a piece of cake and then going 40 days, right? No, yeah, and the so, banana but, and the banana so, was that way 17th century. We adapt we selectively bred bred it to where it is today. It didn't just come that way through natural processes a thousand years ago. It was literally like a couple hundred years ago it looked like that. You sure about that? Yes, look it up. We had bananas the way we see it like oh, several hundred years ago. Idiot. I may be, but I'm just, I don't, I don't just take things, you know, because someone said it. Oh yeah. yeah. 17th century. Like, like riding dinosaurs to work. <laughs> well, I said, maybe I don't see why, why is that a, a problem with my belief system? But uh, nevertheless, my, my point is, is that you understand that the ground actually creates the, the, the plant and it actually, um, gives the nutrition to our plants so if the ground doesn't have good nutrition like if you over cultivate the land it's not going to give you the best uh, watermelon or the best um like, like you know. what is it are how afraid of hell are you like that you believe all this fucking bullshit 
it's, it's okay. No, that it's was okay. I'm not trying to baptize you. You don't have any. What's what's um, the mechanism that makes it such that the drown was like that? The mechanism? Yeah. Um, as far as like it being rich with nutrition. Yes. What's taking the nutrition out of there? Well, I mean, flooding can take out the nutrition. Um, over cultivating no, 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 the land. The so if you. Never mind. Never mind. The mechanism to take it out or put it in. I don't think there's a point. I don't think. Well, it's a it's a direct question. I'm. I'm I don't. You could sure say what... the fall is why food is less nutritious. The genetics just well, decay over time. Sure, but trying, I would like, say like, the like, flood is. Like, never mind. The flood is what caused the floor to the 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 ground to weaken. So because the flood actually took out the nutrition, the minerals, and just shifted it everywhere. Um, it caused it to not um, give the same kind of couldn't uh, have also done the opposite. Like, couldn't have actually enriched it with nutrients because it was flooding and bringing nutrients from all other places. Maybe in some Trying places, you just say the fall, Justin. Well, I'm saying. Well, right, so fall, if it could have also fall. been like that, then how is it expected that it's actually that way? Why would we expect that the flood took away those nutrients? Because that's what happens now. If you cause like a great flood in a certain place, you can actually like take out the nutrients from the ground and it could become can, barren. But it can also implant nutrients into the ground, right? Right, it can. So that's why it can go either way. So if I'm talking so about it being in expect, this way, then that explains it. So we it. don't. So, so you understand then. But that's not an expectation of the theory that we wouldn't find uh, that ground to be nutritious, right? Well, yeah, it, it is an expectation. Like that's why there are certain places that don't you have both expect plant life. it to be nutritious and not nutritious, right? Well, if, on upon certain conditions, if you understand the conditions that would create it to not be nutritious, then yes, there's no mystery. I, wait. No, you said that this, the flood was the explanation. Now you're saying that there's a bunch of other facts that you're using to explain it as well. Well, of course, you, I can't give you all the factors, which is a million, all in one sentence. The flood is one big factor that caused a chain reaction that that caused pretty much the ground to be not as nutrition, nutritious as it was before. So... Yes, I, you can't expect me to give you all the factors all at once. You just don't you understand, just don't understand theory theory if the ground is not, is, if the flood's the deciding factor, then you can't appeal to the to the Abraham. I mean, uh, Noah gets to eat peanuts for you know survival of six months option. No, well, but he of course there wasn't a flood before <laughs> he made the ark. Uh, he could gather the food. You gather some food before. You know that he was going to close the door, and then you know have some stored up for a whole year, and that whole year for him would just be like Build a week's. A giant, you know, a giant food. Yeah, so for us, it, it would be like a like a year's worth of food for us would be just a week worth of food for him. It just he doesn't he doesn't need to like hold that much food. You're fucking delusional. Did you well, also think I mean, he was like 200, 300 years old? No, 900 years old, sorry. Yes, I... How many look, calories do we eat in a week? Like 14,000? So you're telling me he could survive off like 14,000 calories in a whole year? It's even better than that well, because I'm, like, we still haven't heard why <laughs> this should be taken to be a thing. Like, sir, stop it. it. Are you trolling us? Okay, so you can look at my, I, I guess, look at my bio, see that I'm a Seventh-day Adventist, look at what they believe, and understand that what I'm saying is not something that is strange to them. Uh, well, this is what we believe. Well, I don't really, that's not that doesn't help issue. you very much. Like, what's the basis that's not going to help concluding. you. Appealing to Seventh-day Adventist is not going to help What you. is the basis for... Well, it's not helping me look smart to you, sure, but it'll help you know that I'm not trolling. What is the basis for... Oh, I don't think you're trolling. My bad. I don't think you're trolling. I don't think anyone here should think you're trolling either. What is the? Some people think I'm trolling. I'm sorry. Go ahead. What is the actual basis for concluding that the food was sufficiently nutritious to sustain him? Oh, Wait, that, sorry, oh. Jubal. I'm sorry. I look. I just. I just. Uh, 
pulled out my calculator and did 14,000 divided by 365. So you're saying this guy, they, they back then they ate 38 calories a day. On average, they survived off 38 calories a day. You're a clown. 